Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to look at how we can handle timestamps as valid input on a Symfony form. Now you might be thinking that this should already be available and I thought so too until I started trying to do this and I found that I couldn't do it quite as easily as I expected. So if we look at say the date time type, as you can see here, it says that you can have the underlying format of data be a date time object or string or importantly a timestamp but we can't accept a timestamp, at least I couldn't figure out a way to accept a timestamp as valid input. So just to clarify, if you're not completely sure, a timestamp looks something like that. And as it says, it's the amount of seconds that have elapsed since the Unix, Unix epoch, which is just a crazy way of saying midnight on January the 1st, 1970. So this should mean that any second value, so like one through to this crazy big number here, is a valid timestamp and that should be able to be converted back. And the reason I wanted to be able to do it like this was so that I could use Symphony's validations for date times on the input that I was getting. So I'm gonna be using the Twig CRUD application that we came up with in a previous series. And what I'm gonna do, disregarding pretty much all of it, I'll, I'm just interested in the form really. And what I want to do is just add in another field here that's gonna allow me to enter an integer value that we can then transform somehow into our timestamp and back again when we reload the form, that's quite important as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a new field to my entity that's going to allow me to store a date time. And the reason I'm storing a date time over a timestamp is that date times allow you to do more advanced queries inside MySQL and you can still translate them back to timestamps really easily from MySQL as well. So thinking about it from a usability perspective outside of the Symfony environment where you're probably going to be doing the vast majority of your more advanced SQL queries, it's nicer to be able to use a date time, honestly. And to make this function properly, we're going to need to add in the getters and setters. So I'm just going to generate them. That's command N on a Mac. Okay, so we've got our set accurate. I can just add in a quick type hint there to say that it's a date time and we should be able to jump across to our server so this is my local here and this is the server we should be able to do a php bin console doctrine schema update okay so that's added in ignore the warning it's just a badly configured machine and our site should still load which it does and then we can go to our form and add that field in and if we refresh that we should be able to see our date and change it up and whatnot and submit it and if we go and go back to our list, reverse this, and then look at our latest record, edit that, we should see that we're at two, 2016. And if we jump onto the database, we should see the same thing as well. So it seems to all be working so far. Okay, so we should be able to jump back to our form now and change this up to a number type and go back to our form, refresh that, and you can see that it says unable to transform the value for property path. And we expected a numeric and that's the, the problem. I'm, obviously, if, I, if it was this easy, I wouldn't be showing you it in a video. So let's see how we can fix that. Now, Symfony is actually telling you what you need to do here. It's telling you that you need to do a bit of a transformation. And it's not that immediately obvious, but if you've ever done this before, that, that should be the clue really that, that this is what you need to do. So I'm just going to do a quick search for Symfony Data Transformer and show you that there's an article in here in the documentation that pretty much tells you how to do this. Um, the, there is one little bit to it that I find tricky. So yeah, basically you've got to set it on your form type and then set up a model transformer that we'll do shortly. But the, the thing that, that kind of confuses me um, every single time I do this is the difference between a transform and a reverse transform. And that's because I think about them back to front pretty much. So reverse transform is the way that we want to go from our form to our database and transform is coming back from the database to our form and that's as I say where I get confused a lot but anyway let's go ahead and implement this so I'm going to go inside my form directory and I'm going to do a new directory under here called data transformer and in here I'm going to create myself a timestamp to date time transformer I mean, you can name it anything you want but obviously name it something that actually makes sense in the context of what you're trying to do and there's a fun little bug for you. Okay, and because we're implementing that interface, I can go ahead and implement methods. Just let PHP Storm do the hard work there. And as I say, we're gonna start off with our reverse transform because that's the way that I think about it. So I'm gonna change the parameter there to be timestamp because that's what we're going to be working with. We're gonna be working with a number that's the timestamp. And then what I'll do is I'll just dump that timestamp out and we'll see where we get. 
and nothing's actually going to work until I add this to my blog post form type. So outside of this primary builder that I've got going on, I'm going to create another builder or not create as such, but use it. And then I'm going to get the accurate at and I'm going to add a model transformer, which is going to take our new date time or timestamp to date time transformer. And then let's see where we're up to with our form. So you can see there, it, it seems all right so far. So just putting one, two, three and submit that. And we can see that we got our one, two, three coming through. And you can see that's from the line 16 of our timestamp to date time transformer line 16. So that's where we're getting that. So that looks pretty good so far. So knowing this, what I can do is instead create myself a new date time. And then I could do set the timestamp. In fact, that's not going to work exactly because I've just overwritten the value. So we'll call this DT for the moment. And if we dump out that date time, we should be able to see this working properly. So we've now got our, our timestamp set properly, you can see there. But we can tidy this up a little bit. So I'm going to just do a one liner that says timestamp is a new date time. And I'm just going to set the timestamp directly on it like that. And then I don't need any of this. Actually, I can just return it directly in line like that. And if you've never seen that syntax, by the way, it came in PHP 5.4 and it's called class member access on instantiation. So I'll link to that in the show notes. But yeah, a bit of a boffiny term there for what is effectively like a one liner of newing up something and using it. So given that we've just created ourselves a new date time instance and when we're transforming it back, we should just be able to return it. So return and rather than call it value, let's change it to what it's really going to be, which is a date time. And in fact, we could add in a little type in at the top here to tell us that it is actually going to be a date time. And we can say that the date time is going to return the get timestamp. OK, so let's see where we get now. Seems like it's saved off there. So let's just check the database. And you can see that we've properly set back. There's a bit of a problem, though, here in that this is quite naive, uh, if, as we'll see now if we try and create a new record. The timestamp on instantiation of this form is going to be null. So at this point, it's, it's basically bombing out. So what we can do is we can say if the date time is equal to null, then return. And we'll do the very similar sort of thing to what we did in the method below. We'll just return a new date time with the value set to now. And then we'll just return get timestamp. Now, this may be good enough for you. It may not be. Obviously, you've got to use your own judgment and expertise in changing this as appropriate. But what we could do now is we can jump back to our blog post and we can start adding assertions around date times on here. So we could say at assert, which we don't actually have set up properly at the moment. I'll sort that in a sec. We can assert that it's a date time and we could even assert that maybe we want it to be less than now. And as I say, I need to make sure I'm using these assertions. And so if we try this now, this should work because that timestamp is in the past. But if we change it up to be in the future, you can see that it's uh, it's not really allowing us to do that. So there you go. In a relatively easy manner, we've added a timestamp to date time transformer and we can now accept timestamps and save them up as date times into our database.